You as a Malaysian, of course you know all the best restaurants, mangmang stalls already. But I'm still discovering new restaurants, sometimes by accident. So if you allow me, today I want to introduce you to a restaurant I recently discovered. A mamak restaurant even, where the Nasi Kanda enriched my day. So much so that I dreamt about it and got back to it two days later for another round of that wonderful food. And I want to introduce you to this restaurant because if you love Malaysian food, it's a place you really want to visit. Of course, I do know as a Malaysian, you have discovered and know many, many, many restaurants serving the best food. Teach me, type some names of restaurants you totally love in the comments below because I would love to visit them. And maybe, just maybe, you are not aware of the restaurant I'm sharing with you right now. So watch on and let me introduce you to that special place. It's a place called Nasikanda Basikal. Do you know it already? Now let me rewind back because hey, most likely you watching this video as a Malaysian knows the story of Nasikanda, but I can't expect everybody to know it. So allow me to give you a quick rundown of the story of Nasikanda before we get back to the story about my restaurant visit. Nasikanda, of course, you as a Malaysian know that Nasi stands for rice. Do you know where Kanda is coming from? I learned it from my favorite Wikipedia. So here we go. Kanda is an Urdu name and it means shoulder. Another possible theory goes that the name originated from the word Manganda, rest on shoulders, which is Malay. However, both theories of the origin of the word Nasikanda are aligned on its common nominator, the use of a shoulder pole for transporting the food. Nasikanda originates from the early 1900s when Indian Muslim vendors would sell curry and rice to the dock employees of Wild Key or Key. Wild Key is a coastal road along the eastern shoreline of the city of Georgetown in Penang. The rice hawkers would commonly set up stools at a jetty to sell breakfast to dock workers. It was also common for the sellers to operate on the roadside or beneath a shady tree. They would carry brass pots by a bamboo or a wooden shoulder pole. On one end of the pole there were containers holding curry mills with plain rice on the other end. And from the mid of the 20th century the sellers of Nasikanda moved towards restaurant environments, which is still the case today. Now, of course, according to my own personal experience, Nasi Kanda is mostly served in Penang and in Pirak. But I have the feeling, please confirm, that it spreads into Kuala Lumpur, which I think is great. And even the owner of Nasi Kanda Basikal told me that he originally comes from Perak, but for the past five years operates Nasi Kanda Basikal from Sri Kambangan. So you are you're from Perak? Yeah, Penal. And you brought Nasi Kanda to Tiao? Hi, Dad. With the Pigoth? Your father? Father, my father. Father, what way did he? He right take the cup here? Yeah. yeah. How now already? Oh my dear. Five years. Uh, always like that. Uh, yeah, five years already. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you. Good advice. Now let me share with you the amazing adventure we had eating in Nasi Kanda Basikal. You see, it started off as so many Malaysian stories. What's to eat on a Sunday afternoon? What you want to eat today? I don't know. Why shall I know? I have no idea. How come you never know? I don't know. Really have no idea. Can you decide? I shall decide. Okay, la, let's just drive around for a while. Don't you relate to this one as well? We always have the discussion, where do we go to eat? So we just drove around, ended up in Sri Kambangan. We came across that beautiful restaurant as we saw many people lining up. And of course, it's a Malaysian sign. If there are people lining up in front of a restaurant, the food must be good, right? So we stopped, we parked, we lined up, we queued up. Now my family queued up first. I walked around and I thought like, wow, what kind of food is that? I saw it and it looked so beautiful. So I started to record the video that you are going to watch here right now instantly because I thought like that's a treasure trove of wonderful, great food. It took us about 45 minutes to reach the end of the line that we are finally able to place our order. And the food, there was so much food. You can see it here in the video. So much food variety, so many options. Kind of like freezing, don't know what to take. I would have loved to take all of it. But I took my favorite honey chicken. My family members took something else and off we hurried to eat the food as we found a place luckily to sit. And hey, of course, as you can see, our plates were overloaded with food. Too much, in fact. Can't stop sometimes seeing Malaysian food, right? I turned into a real foodie since I arrived here in Malaysia. <laughs>
or the honey chicken that I ate. I mean, I ate honey chicken in many different places across Malaysia. It's one of my favorite. But this one, the flavors just exploded in my mouth. Now, as we ordered the food and put it all together, what I liked a lot was in the end, after filling up your plate, the guys behind ask you if you want to have your rice or your food more spicy, patas, or less spicy. So if you want to have it more spicy, they're adding a little scoop of extra spicy curry onto your rice. Delicious, I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> we had tea masala after our food and it was like what another delicious delicious experience a tea masala you have to try it when you are there really it's like i'm not a tea person i'm more of a coffee guy but this tea masala is just like mind-boggling wonderful in its taste and what I think is also very nice in this restaurant is that the beauty of the food expresses itself in the design of the food. I'm giving you a little show here right now about the interior design of this restaurant. And hey, you can see the owner, right? And of course, you can see the bicycle, bicycle in English, which is kind of the symbol for this restaurant. And that little small stuff which is lined up at the walls, at the side of the walls. The waiters, very, very friendly, really love doing this stuff. The restaurant is packed, but wow, they were really on top of the whole pressure from the different people waiting and queuing and eating and serving and, and, and cleaning the tables. They were really on top of things. So if you are in the area of Sri Kamangan, eat there. Tell me in the comments if you had been there. Share in the comments any other Nazikanda store or restaurant or mamak here in Kuala Lumpur area that I can visit. And if you know some in Penang or Perak, Melaka, Nekrisambilan, any other place, where are the good restaurants? Share with me. I want to know about them because Nazikanda, best. Until then, Temekase, Jumbalaki, bye bye.